that uh, we intend to accomplish for our session. Okay, to start with, I like to say uh, it gives me pleasure to talk about strategic planning because this is one of the interesting topics that all administrators should be familiar with. And I would like to share with you our own the experiences in developing a five-year uh, strategic development plan in my former school, the Montessori School of Immaculate Conception. So aside from discussing theoretical, theoretical underpinnings, I will try to give you illustrative cases using our personal experiences at MSIC. My dear colleagues in education, during the past uh, 30 years, much attention has been focused on how schools, institutions, and organizations can formulate new strategies for competitive advantage. In the case of private schools, like the Montessori School of Immaculate Conception, stiff competition among competitor schools is prevalent today more than ever. Uh, are there, are, are some of you working in private schools? Are there people around who are connected with private schools now? Meron ba sa inyo nasa private school? All, that means all of you are working in the public schools. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Now, anyway, even in the public schools, there is also some kind of competitions existing between uh, schools. So it will be important how we can make use of this strategic planning as a tool for any development undertaking. Even the increased support of government on teacher salaries and fringe benefits in the public school has even made the situation in many private schools okay, more difficult to coexist with the public schools. Isang malaking problem ito ng private schools. After training the teachers for a few years, here they are applying for uh, a position in the public schools. So admin school administrators in private schools find it difficult to be continuously training teachers. No? And how to retain the good teachers in school is a big challenge to private school administrators. Coupled with the economic and financial crisis within the country and the world today, private schools are left with a big challenge of coming up with a with realistic strategic development plans. Kaplan and Norton authorities in strategic planning contend that the making of a strategic plan is an art. It is an art that should nonetheless be governed by a systematic process, a process that defines the organization's purpose and carefully examines both the external and internal factors obtaining in the institutions. This is to identify also opportunities and constraints regarding the strategy that will be formulated. Okay, for McNamara, strategic planning is essentially the process of formulating plans, objectives, and strategies in the light of identified perceivable threats and opportunities in the external environment considering the strengths and weaknesses of the organization to achieve a commonly set desirable future. Strategic planning becomes more interesting and need-based when the planner tries to incorporate the principles of the balance, scorecard system, and strategy maps in the process. Okay, certain perspectives have to be observed, you know, in doing strategic planning. And this perspective include downboard thinking, 
the second perspective, paradigm shift. And the third perspective is holistic and global orientations. So all planners must be familiar with this three planning perspective before getting into the process. Okay, uh, downboard thinking or the concept of downboard thinking is similar to the way chess grandmaster thinks and does when he plays the game. He does not only think and decide on his immediate moves, but he must look downboard and considers his opponent's possible responses to his moves, and then later plans several moves ahead. A planner operates in almost the same way, the planner has to consider not only the current issues and problems obtaining in the school, but the planner has to carefully analyze the threats as well as the opportunities in the concerned school. On the other hand, A paradigm is a set of ideas, usually unwritten, that many people have learned and developed through education and experiences that defines the conventional method about the rules of nature and life. You know, this paradigm acts as a mental filter that delimits the way we think about things by putting a set of boundary conditions that are often more perceived than real. I like to emphasize, my dear co-teachers, that in strategic planning, the planner has to get out of the box. He has to critically analyze issues, problems, trends, opportunities, weaknesses, as well as, well as other factors. No? that interfere with school operation. In the same manner, the planner has to identify that the factors that have to be taken advantage of and must be uh, considered as opportunities to build on. And in the same manner, the variables that threaten the attainment of the school goals and objectives the planner has to think of ways on how the factors or the variables can be moderated, if not totally avoid or influence the, uh, the plans no? or the strategies that have been formulated. Holistic and global orientation, on the other hand, requires the need to change and enlarge our educational paradigm from teaching to learning, from rote mastery to process learning, from input oriented to output and outcome oriented assessments. The use of the systems approach to strategic planning affords the school administrator and the planner to be holistic and global in orientation. My dear co-teachers, the SFSDF starts by developing or revisiting the organization's vision, mission, and values. This is what uh, Kaplan calls the four-step strategy development process the four-step strategy development process. So you can visually see the four steps in the PowerPoint. I said, I, I like to repeat, the first step is developing or revisiting the organization's vision, mission, and values. What do we mean? If the school has not crafted a carefully thought out organization's vision, mission, and values, that should be done first. Moreover, if the school has already formulated a carefully crafted vision, mission, and values, 
all that the planner has to do is to revisit and ask himself whether this is the same perspective or scenario that he would want to happen in the school in the next five years, in the next 10 years, or in the future. Now, this has to be followed with uh, the formulation of strategic goals and objectives. The goals and objective to be formulated, to be strategic, it must be need-based. And therefore, the critical analysis of factors obtaining in the school is a very important step in strategic planning. It must be need-based and responsive to current issues and problems obtaining in the school. The third step, my dear co-teacher, is what we call strategic analysis, which is essentially which essentially involves the analysis of key issues and problems, including external and internal forces that may affect the institutional strategies. And finally, strategy formulation, which essentially is creating the case for change in the organization. Allow me to discuss each step in greater detail this time, okay? The systematic four-step strategy development process addresses four basic questions in strategic planning. And the first of this question is, what business are we in and why? So this is a question that involves the statement of the vision, mission, and values. All the members of the academic community must be aware, must, under, must, be, uh, must, must understand what business are teachers and non-teaching personnel, uh, do teachers and non-teaching personnel have and why? So in other words, what I'm saying is the vision, mission, and values must be clearly understood by everybody in the school. And the second questions that we ask ourselves is, where are we going from where we are now? So we are referring to the strategic goals, which essentially provides the direction in our school operation. The third base question is, what are the key issues or what are the crucial problems that our strategy must address? And technically, this is what we refer to as strategic analysis. Sometimes I'm, or some authors may even call this environmental scanning. So the researcher has to do a great deal of analysis of internal and external factors affecting the operation of the school. And finally, we ask ourselves, how can we best compete? In other words, we now have to consider the strategies that need to be formulated and later on implemented. Okay, phase one of the uh, strategic development of the four step uh, development process refers to revisiting the vision, mission and goals and values of the school. You know, authorities in planning are saying that to engage in strategic planning is like designing our dreams and trying to shape our future in the school. Very beautiful, no? The strategic visioning process is like designing our dreams and shaping our future. Why? Okay, vision actually made their friends is an act of power of seeing an ideal state through mental equity or foresight that a man or a institution intends to accomplish. This is according to Kaufman et al. In other words, it is the vision is a statement or position that identifies the ideal of what you want your organization or you want your school to become. 
So it's easy to remember. No? We need not memorize a very long definition. When we talk about vision in planning, it means what do we want our school or organization to become in the next future? Would you like to be a center of development? Would you like the institution to be a center of excellence or a pilot school in particular disciplines like science and mathematics? Because this will give us the direction in our track towards our development undertaking. Okay? The vision is actually a dream. Our dream of the school. Mission, on the other hand, on the other hand is a statement of the purpose of the organization. We know what our dream is. We know what our vision is. It is important to know, or it is important to state who we are, who, whom we serve, what products and services do we provide, and how do we make these products available to our clients. The mission statement, my dear friend, states what the school or the organization intends to do to realize our dream of our vision. So let's pick up from there. I like to repeat. Vision is a statement of what we want the school to become in the next five years, in the next 10 years, or in the near future. Okay? Mission, on the other hand, is a statement of the purpose of the organization. It states who we are. In other words, the mission statement tells us what do we intend to do to realize our dream and our vision. Okay. Vision and mission statements may seem like soft stuff of the organization, but as station executives declare this intangible elements play a very important role in the success or failure of the organization. My dear friends, clear vision and mission statements are among the crucial building blocks of successful organizations or schools and are the very heart of every organization's strategic plan. Let us remember that effective vision and mission statements galvanize our business. The focus they bring help you and me execute our strategies, achieve our goals, and leave out our values. Very nice to hear. Now, let me share with you our personal experiences in doing visioning uh, process, uh, visioning and missioning processes in the school. Let me share you our personal experience in my former school at Montessori School of Immaculate Conception. When we began our strategic development plan, visioning came first. And uh, in visioning, we asked ourselves, what is our preferred future. We had an exercise to be able to solicit the active participation of teachers and non-teaching personnel in the school. We grouped ourselves into three. Group one consists of grade school teachers. The second group consists of high school teachers. And the third group, non-teaching personnel, okay? The third group would be the NTP of the school. And then the, what we did was I asked each group to appoint a group leader who acted as moderator and presenter of group reports. In the same way, a rapporteur was chosen or was elected who served as recorder of the group's deliberation. Each group was asked to consider three important guidelines. 
first, I wrote the guidelines of the board. The first guideline is, what do you want the school to become in the next 10 years? Okay, and actually this is needed for the visioning process. All right. Second question, or so second guideline is, I ask the teachers to think about how do they plan to get there? What are they going to do to be able to achieve our dream and our vision for the school? And finally, is, is it still the same vision and mission statements that they want for our school in the future? Because when we started, there was already a formulated vision and mission statements. So the, the, the first thing that we discuss is, is it still the same perspective or scenario that we would want the school to have? If not, I told them to make the necessary revisions. So we, we break into groups. And then after the group discussions, after about an hour, we had a plenary. And in the plenary session, there was group sharing, processing, and allow me to present to you the result of the group sharing of the various group. Okay, the summary of the group sharing was given to the three groups and each group was asked to prepare a carefully crafted vision statement. I, pre I gave them some guidelines like this one. I told them to draw on the beliefs and mis mission and environment of the school. And they have to be specific in visioning and missioning. They have to be very specific to the organization or to the school. They need to be positive and inspiring. They need to assume, uh, they need not assume that the school will have the same framework as it does in the future. And what do they want to see in the future today? They were reminded to be open to dramatic changes or modifications in the school in terms of methodology, techniques, facilities, and other concerns. And the vision must be encompassed by their beliefs. So with these guidelines, the group uh, discussed, and then later on, there was some kind of presentations in a plen plenary session. Each group highlighted what their dream of the school is all about. The first group came up with this important dream. No? MIC envisions to be a lead basic education institution in the municipality and in the province of Bulacan. The second group emphasized they envisioned the school to produce elementary and high school graduates equipped with necessary knowledge, attitude, and skills. And the non-teaching personnel said they dream of developing academic excellence and lifelong learning in the spirit of stewardship among students and graduates. Okay. Afterwards, we tried to study, no? we tried to study the different presentations of the three groups. And I asked the group to meet again, to combine the three into a well-crafted uh, vision statement. After another group session and another group discussions was conducted. And then later on, there was another plenary session. There was again sharing, processing, and group sharing of the results. After that, the group came up, no? In a plenary, the group came up with this vision statement. Take note that in formulating the vision, uh, the, the vision statement of the school, the output of the three groups were, you know, crafted in a single futuristic statement. Okay, single futuristic statement. And this was the final vision statement submitted by the participants. 
Montessori School of Immaculate Conception envisions itself to be a lead institution in the formation of well-rounded individuals equipped with knowledge and skill competencies and desirable attitudes and values. Take note that the output of the three groups were all incorporated in the final vision statement. Do you have any comment as far as the vision statement is concerned by their colleagues in education? Any comments so far? Are you none, none, sir. None, yeah. none sir. Uh, you are clear about how the vision would be for can, would, can be formulated. Okay. You know, it's very important. Madali sulatin yun eh. But it is important that all members of the academic community must have a hand. They all have to give active participation so that everybody owns the vision statement. Hindi yung top management lang ang may gusto. But all teachers, all personnel, okay, must have a share in the formulation of the vision statement. After that, the next ex, uh, we we now after after that we had the exercise in creating the mission statement. With the agreed vision statement, the personnel met again in groups to talk about how they can plan to get there. Michael. Okay, how uh, they can plan to get there and what do we have to do to achieve the vision? Uh, one moment, please. Bing. Okay, I'm sorry for the interruption. Okay. Uh, where, do, where do they stop? With the agreed vision statement, the personnel met again in groups to talk about how they plan to get there. What do we have to do to achieve the vision? After the group discussions, there was another plenary session. There was sharing and processing and the results. May let allow me to present to you the results. Okay. So each group deliberated on this. Okay, group one said, uh, the guiding question is, how do we plan to achieve our dream? The first group said, we have to offer quality basic education programs. The second group suggested to give access to quality education to disturbing clients. The other group submitted programs that instill basic respect for inherent dignity of the human person must be given top priority in the school operation. And all groups agreed to develop academic excellence and lifelong learning skills in the spirit of stewardship. Okay. The groups had another plenary to put together you know, the good ideas that they have formulated. And finally, the group ended up with this mission statement. To achieve the vision, Montessori School of Immaculate Conception as an institution commits itself to make available to its learners one high quality basic education program program affordable to deserving learners, regardless of gender, origin, race, and creed. Programs and services that instill basic respect for the inherent dignity of the human person. Finally, develop academic excellence and lifelong learning skills in the spirit of stewardship. So take note that the final mission statement came from the output of the different groups in a plenary they will sit down and together agree on how they could put together or blend the many good ideas that they suggested in the sharing period okay uh, so far do you have any question regarding development of mission statement mm -hmm. 
Any questions so far? Yes, none. Thanks no, God, I have a fast learners group. <laughs> Mukhang mapakabilis po make up ng group po. So I'm sure you can, uh, you will not find it difficult to develop a strategic development plan in your school. That is the first phase of the four step. Uh, development process. Let's go to the next step. The next step or phase two has something to do with formulating goals and objectives. At the back of our minds would be the vision and mission statement formulated by the groups. From there, let me know, yung goals and objectives are uh, things that we want to accomplish. The only difference is the time frame. Normally for objectives, these are uh, things that we want to accomplish maybe in the next five years, while goals are things we want to accomplish in a much longer time, like 10 years, for example, or 20 years. All right? But they mean the same thing. Things that we want to accomplish. All right? Goal is defined as a desirable future condition, which a school strives to achieve. Normally, it's broad in scope and long-term in perspective. As I mentioned earlier, maybe something that you want to accomplish in the next 10 years or in the next uh, 20 years. Uh, related yun sa sinasabi natin, perspective plan. Okay? A goal dovetails the vision and mission of the organization. This being so, the formulation of goal calls for an elaboration in a, in, a, in a specific manner, the generalities of the mission statement. Let me give you some examples to give you a clearer picture. Okay, how do we formulate goal? Here is an example of a goal in, in instruction. For example, you would say, provide quality basic education programs responsive to, the, to local and international standards of quality and excellence okay an example of a goal in instruction all right on the other hand an objective is more specific than the goal a specific description of an end result to be achieved it is a translation of the broad goal into a set of more specific and concrete objectives now, usually, my dear co-teachers, it is a translation of the goal into program objectives in terms of offering, maybe uh, in terms of the great uh, programs, grade school, junior high, or senior high school program. Okay, examples of objectives and instruction. No? In the case of the Montessori School of Immaculate Conception, this strategic planning was prepared during my last year in the school. And that was in 2016. The five-year plan, strategic plan, covers 2017 to 2022. The first goal that we formulated is acquire a level one accreditation status in basic education program. Alam niya, sa private school, usong-usong dyan yung accreditation. Once the school has achieved certain levels of maturity, we submit our programs for accreditation of FAPE because any school that passes the accreditation of FAPE would be entitled to some benefits you know, that the government would give. Okay, so that's one example. After that, then you, go, you proceed to accreditations. Now. And the first one is level one accreditation program. Or maybe enrich and update the curriculum and program of studies in accordance with DepEd and PACOCOA standards. DepEd, you know that, that is the supervising uh, unit no, of all schools, public and private, in the entire country. PACOCOA is the accrediting agency for private school. PACOCOA stands for Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities Commission on Accreditation Standards. Okay, so we want the programs accredited not only by DepEd, but by Pakokoa. Okay, examples of objectives. Okay? Oh, sorry. The goals and objectives are formulated within the purview of 
some institutional trust or framework. In the case of the MSIC, expressed in a systems quadrant shown in figure three. If you, if you try to download literatures from DepEd regarding the operations of schools, DepEd emphasizes the achievements of quality and excellence in program uh, offerings, relevance and responsiveness in all our uh, uh, programs, efficiency and effectiveness in operation, and access and equity. So the plan that we made was based on this quadrant. Okay, so there you see the four quadrants that was observed in uh, preparing the strategic development plan of the school. Okay. Next step is phase three, and this is strategic analysis or environmental scanning. With a clear picture of what it needs to achieve, the school or the organization is now ready to perform external and internal analysis of factors that may affect the operation of the schools. These factors are socioeconomic issues and problems that may impact on the performance of the schools and its positioning relative to the competitor schools in the community, as well as developing a detailed understanding of how it presently derives value. Yan ang malaking competition ng private school. And there, may, there are many ways of doing it, like establishing a niche in academic, cultural, and sports competitions in the area. Isa, isa sa pinaglalabanan ng mga schools yan. No? Academic competitions, cultural competitions, sports competition. Actually, external analysis or the environmental scanning is the third phase. No? And the basic questions we ask is, where are we now? And what resources are available at our disposal? External analysis involves assessing and understanding the impact of macroeconomic factors, particularly the competitor schools on the institutional strategy and operation. Alam niyo, nakakatawang pag-aralan ang mga strategies na ini-implement ang private schools in order to compete very well with competitor schools. Montessori School is in the municipality of Baliwag. Dito sa Baliwag, for those of you who have not visited, Every two blocks, may school. You may not be, uh, you may not believe, but there are more than 30 schools in the community. Private palang yun. And there are, there are public schools in every barangay. So you can imagine the stiff competition going on. And the school to be able to get its client, it must be able to set or establish a niche as a quality school or an excellent school. Now, external analysis actually involves what is called pestel analysis, okay? Environmental scanning is another term for situational analysis, which refers to the process of closely examining the environment where the organization operates in terms of demographic, social, economic, political, physical, nat natural, technological dimensions the organization's programs, services, resources, and outputs. Okay, external analysis, this is what I'm telling you, is sometimes called PESTEL, P-E-A-S-T-E-L. The acronym stands for, P refers to stand for political factors, E, economic factors, S, social factors, T is technological factors. The second E is environmental factors. And finally, legal factors or legal issues and concerns. Can you imagine? Kaya your external analysis is not a mean thing to do. We have to carefully assess and understand macroeconomic factors in the light 
of the following acronyms. All right? What about internal analysis? No? Pag sinabi natin macro, factors outside the campus or factors in the community, in the competitor schools. Internal analysis, on the other hand, examines the institution's own performance as well as its capabilities. This is where we use the balanced scorecard system. And this is found to be very useful because it allows the planner or the school administrator to balance uh, to, 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 uh, to do a balanced analysis of issues in terms of four dimensions. One is you put together all issues that concern the clientele or the students. Second, put together all issues that pertains the personnel of the schools. What do parents feel about their teacher, about the teachers of the school? How do students comment on the non-teaching personnel of the school, things of this sort, no? Personal. The other one, of course, will be finance. This is very important. And this has something to do with, siguro kasama na rito yung tuition fee schedules in comparison with comp competitor schools, miscellaneous fee schedules. Maybe another one could be yung mga strategy on how to collect uh, fees from students. Kailangan makaisip ang school ng mga practical and doable. Yung iba ginagawa ay, when, when a parent pays tuition in full, binibigyan agad ng discount. 10% or 50% discount. Or sometimes even 20%, basta fully paid. All right. Kung hindi naman, kung quarterly, misan uh, nagbibigay din ng 10% discount. Kung ang bayad ay installment, kailangan the school must be able to devise an installment package that parents will not find burdensome no? or difficult to get along with. And the final uh, issue would be operational problems and concern. So this has something to do with how the policies of the schools are implemented by teachers and non-teaching personnel. Sometimes ang akala natin ay okay na okay na ang takbo ng school because you are able to get very good teachers, quality teachers. No? Nagbigay ka talaga na high salaries to be able to get good teachers. Only to find out that some personnel of the finance office drive the students and parents out of the school. Sometimes even the security forces. Kaya ito yung, uh, these are all factors that concerns the operation of the school. Okay, this is usually done by their friends by SWOT analysis. So essentially, we met as a group again and conducted SWOT analysis. How do we do this? Itong SWOT analysis natin. Okay, itong environmental scanning is usually done by doing SWOT analysis of the internal and external factors that may affect the preferred vision developing a theoretical planning framework corresponding to the development issues and problems. SWOT analysis calls for an analysis of its factor variable using a two by two SWOT matrix table, classifying whether its variable may be categorized as strength, opportunity, strength, threat, weakness, opportunity, or weakness, threat. Let me unlock the term first before we go to the actual SWOT analysis results. Okay, let me unlock. Variables, my dear friends, that are classified as a strength opportunity should be taken advantage of and should be considered as opportunities to build up upon those identified strengths. So uh, members of the academic community must be aware what are the factors that are considered strengths no? and opportunities for the school. And we have to build up on this factor. Examples of this is when the school has supportive management leadership, when the school has committed school administrators, a pool of competent teachers, 
and when school is able to establish good linkages and networks with other schools and other agencies of government and private. On the other hand, variables that are considered strength threats are factors that may be considered as a strength, but nevertheless, threaten the attainment of goals and objectives of the school. Ano ano ba itong uh, strength threat factors? Alimbawa natin, example, the proposed operation of a competitor school in the area. Uh, in a way, uh, it could be considered strength because the collaborations can be set up. Pero, pwede din namang maging threat because unless management is keen on how to handle the good operation of the school, baka maubos ang eskwela natin at maabsorb ng competitor school kung maganda ang kanilang mga marketing strategies. Another factor could be mediocre performance of students in government exams. Even in private schools, students take up uh, or would, be, would undergo NEET examinations or sometimes NCAI. No? And kay for the high school, need for the great school. Somewhat like that. Ayan, ang ginagawa kasi ng DepEd, inirarank ang schools according to the performance of students in this examination. This has to be carefully considered in planning. No one, no parents would enroll and school to a low-performing private school. E kung low-performing din lang, why enroll your students in the private school? At sa public school na, baka mas maganda pa ang quality. Wala pang, libre pa ang, ano, ang education. Opening of government-run schools. Now, this is happening lately. I like to think all private schools are experiencing problems on keeping students in campus. Because every year, walang choice ang private schools. Almost every year. Kundi man every year, every other year. They have to increase tuition because teachers clamor for salary increase, increase in fringe benefits. Where will management get the funds for this? Unlike the public school teachers, you're lucky. Principals, this is not your problem because the national government pays the salaries and the incentives, you know, fringe benefits of the teachers. Another one would be Increase salaries and benefits of teachers in the public schools. Pa, paano naman naging problema yan sa private? The higher the salaries and benefits of teachers in public schools, the more the private school teachers no, uh, think of transferring. So yung loob kumisan ay hindi solid sa school. They will express this to top management and unless top management can do something about it, the following school year will find out Many of your teachers are transferring again. So these are factors considered strength threats. What about strength weakness? Uh, sorry, weakness opportunity. Weakness opportunity, uh, the planner is challenged to create ways of overcoming the identified weakness and at the same time turn this into an opportunity. What are these factors? Ito po mga examples. Not too competitive salary scheme in the private school. Low student retention. You know what it means, no? Yung uh, not too competitive salary, madaling maintindihan niyan. When your salary is not competitive, that transfer mo teachers sa other private schools or sa public schools. Low student retention. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, there are students who transfer to other schools. When the number, when enrollment decreases, it, it is easy to understand that tuition fees that will be collected will also decrease. Miscellaneous fees will also decrease. Auxiliary income like canteen operations, book sales will likewise decrease. But yeah, this is considered a weakness no? opportunity. Pero kayang i-arrange siyang, kaya tinawag din natin, pwede ding maging opportunity ito for development efforts. Sometimes marketing strategies would be an important factor. Some schools are afraid to spend for marketing programs. And therefore, they are not able to recruit you know, good students who would be entering the school. Kumisan sabi ko nga, ang gagaling ng mga teachers, 
Pero yung registrar, masungit. Yung finance officer, hindi customer friendly. And this may drive students and parents out of the school. All right. Next set of variables is the combinations of weakness and threat. The planner has to think and devise strategies or interventions to lessen, if not totally eliminate, the effect of these variables on the institution's goals and objectives. What are some examples of this? Low receivable management. Blocking problem in the school. In other words, some parents do not pay their obligations on time. But teachers have to be paid on time. So yan ay isang problem ng private school. High turnover rate of teachers. If the salaries and benefits are not competitive, this is likely to happen. Attractive salaries and fringe benefits of teachers in competitor schools. So dapat, yung management must be sensitive. Kinakailangan eh, he, feel, he feels, management feels the pulse of other private competitor schools and the public schools. And of course, if you ask me, the best marketing strategy of any school would be the quality of the faculty. You agree with that? I, I feel it's not the building, uh, physical infrastructure is important. To me, it's not the number one marketing strategy ng school. I still feel it is retaining the good teachers in the school. Would you sound off? Are you in agreement to this? Yes, sir. All right. So, yes, po, sir. Yes, po, sir. Yes, po, sir. Very well said. Ang laking problema natin ngayon is how do you keep the good teachers in school? There are many ways of doing it. It's not always the salary. Sometimes the quality of interpersonal relationship no, that management establish in the school. Dapat, misan di mo na iniisip yung hindi masyadong malaki sweldo mo. If you enjoy your stay in campus, if you find the students well-meaning, and you find top management considerate. So that's what I mean by this. The last set of variables, oh sorry. The last set of variables will be... Uh, Weakness, threat. No? Uh, I think I have discussed this. Ito, when we did, meron, meron table na gagawin. Eh. It's a four by uh, two by two table. No? Uh, vertical, horizontally, you'll have their opportunities and threats all under the category of strengths. And then, at the bottom of this, hindi lang kakasya, sa baba, weakness naman. You still, you still have opportunities and threat under the column of weaknesses. Let's try to identify. You know, this is the results of the environmental scanning done by the teachers. They identified the following as a strength opportunity. Very understandable naman. Supportive management leadership, competent administrators, full of committed teachers, value-oriented non-teaching personnel, established linkages and networks, and innovative modalities in program delivery. Right now, some private schools had a problem kasi wala silang online. Or some schools, public and private, no? wala silang online modality. Kaya hindi man lang sila makapag-offer ng blended learning modality because they don't have the facilities. Okay? So threat, uh, the following, were identified by the teachers. Take note, it is the teachers who identify, who put the variables on the cell. Sa kanila, ang strength threat would be may joker performance of students in government exam. Perform students are performing not actually very low, pero it's not uh, very ideal. Eh, ang, I, ang issue rito, parents would say, why do I have to send my children in? in exclusive private schools and pay high tuition when the performance is only as high as the performance of many public school students. Operation of competitor schools, attractive salaries and fringe benefits of teachers in competitive schools, limited government scholarship slots. Malaking bagay ito. Yun lang sa PAPE, 
Uh, it's a private school kasi sometimes binibigyan lang ng slot, 50 per school year. Well, when you have so many high school students, yung iba ay, they feel disgruntled if they are not extended any scholarship slots. Okay? Inability to implement selective admission procedures. Try to scan on student manuals of private schools, particularly the mga exclusive high-paying uh, schools. Makikita niyo dyan that uh, to, for them to be able to deliver their programs very well, they intend to implement selective admission and retention fall procedures. Sa papel lang po ito nangyayari madalas. Because private schools, especially nowadays, are finding it difficult to keep the students in campus. Lipat ng lipat yan. Ako compare mga parents. Doon ay ka, ang tuition fee, ganito lang. So lipat na kami doon. Yung school na yan, nasa top 10 ng debt ed as a high performing school. So lipat kami doon. This is the case. If you are not able to get or select students who will be enrolling in your school, apektado tsak ang performance mo. Baka ang nakuha mo dyan ay yung mga rejects. So, expect that the performance of your school in government exams would be a problem. Another one will be difficulty of attracting and retaining quality faculty. Problems of generally all private schools. And of course, streamlining of personnel. What do I mean by streamlining of personnel? Kumisan may teacher, math major, Pero ang sections ng school is one section or two sections per year or per grade. Kaya yung math teacher, pinagtuturo ng ibang subject. Okay? And, or sometimes, kung hindi man, kung hindi man uh, uh, teaching all subjects, halimbawa, math teachers ka, but you teach math ng grade 7, grade 8, grade 9, grade 10, 11, 12. So you will have six preparations. And teachers find it difficult to do that. Kasi nagbabawas madalas, no? nag streamline ng personal and private school. Okay? Next set of variables. Weakness. Pero pwede rin gawing opportunity. Not too competitive salary. Low student retention. Uh, unattractive marketing strategies. Not customer-friendly stuff. Too many preparations for teachers. Physical facilities not adequate. Library facilities not adequate. Tapos may problema pa sila sa collection efficiency. But the biggest problem, my dear friends, ito yung pinakamalaking problema natin. Ano? One is the, the weakness na threat pa. When you find enrollment, enrollment dwindling. Study the trend of enrollment. Makita nyo, for the last three years, enrollment has decrease napaka lungkot na scenario yan sa private school may problem pa sila sa collection low receivable ma management high turnover rate of teachers downtown palit palit ang teachers downtown palit palit ang teachers marketing competitions for highly qualified teachers steep competition from competitor schools Difficulty of attracting and retaining quality faculty. Difficulty uh, uh, in giving attractive salaries and benefits. Limited scholarship slots given to students. The economic crisis or the effect of economic downturn. And, of course, decrease in program revenues. Now, once you have identified... No, you can only come up with a very good analysis of the macroeconomic factors if you do a good deal of SWOT analysis. All right, maybe we can pause for a while, my dear co-teachers. Do you have any question in conducting SWOT? Any question you would like to ask? Any question? There's none? Well, thanks God. I have a fast learners group. Walang problema. <laughs> okay, I will not force you. So the next step now will be stage four. 
nakapag-environment na nakapag-formulate na tayo or affirm ng vision, mission, goals. We have form uh, vision, mission, and values. We have formulated goals and objective, conducted uh, environmental scanning or strategic analysis, and now we are ready to do strategy formulation. Your strategy formulation can be uh, done very well if uh, the SWOT results, no? the results of the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threat be converted to what we call SOAR, which stands for strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and desired results. So I will convert natin ang SWOT sa SOAR. How do we do it? The use of the balance scorecard and strategy map will help you convert SWOT into SOAR easily. Let me give you some examples. This is the picture of the balance scorecards. Remember nung nag-SWOT analysis kayo, teachers identified problems from A to D. Problems dealing with students, parents, clientele. Operations of the school, relationship, uh, uh, what else? Relationship, operational procedures, finance, no? Tuition, miscellaneous schedules, payment of fees. And of course, personnel. How do teachers and non-teaching personnel, you know, respond to the needs and problems of the clients or the students and parent? You group them according to perspective using the balance scorecard system. Kaya yung results ng SOAR natin kanina, i-convert natin sa SOAR. The balance scorecard and strategy map is a widely used system based on developing a balanced set of indicators for a school. One that is wider than the traditional focus of simply thinking about bottom line profit. It's not always enrollment that we think, although that's very important. It's not always income or profit that we think. That will come naturally. Pagka maayos ang operational systems and procedures at maganda ang financial scheduling sa school. Okay? The rest will follow. It encourages, I mean, the balance scorecards and strategy map encourages consideration of four layers of indicator. Financial perspective, a customer perspective, an internal perspective of the personal in the school, and finally, the operational perspective. Look how beautiful is the balance scorecard system and strategy map. Okay, let me present to you. A later development in strategic planning is the use of balance scorecards uh, systems and strategy maps. This means visualizations of the issues. Mas madaling mag-analyze ng issues pagka ginamitan natin ng balance scorecard and strategy maps. Kesa pa na textual, kaya yung report ninyo, yung plano na, pakakapal, 100 pages. Baka hindi pagtsaga ang basahin. But if you use the balance scorecard system and strategy map, you are able to put across the, the issues and problems in a more understandable, visualized procedure by perspective. The BSCSM approach can be analyzed using concepts from outcomes theory. The outcomes theory may be any system which attempts in part or whole to deal with attributing factors or key players to account for changes in the desired outcome. Based on the results of the SWOT analysis, the first thing that we have to do is highlight the issues. You see, nag, nag SWOT analysis tayo, no? Yung quadrant, you remember? This time, you will now highlight the issues according to perspective. Client, pagsasamasamahin natin, all issues and problems that concern the clients, 
put together all issues and problems that concerns finance, operations, okay, and the like. So in the end, we will group the issues according to the four perspectives. Later, create a visualization of the issues in the light of the vision, mission, and values of the school. Later on, you have to map the desired strategies. Tingnan nyo, ang dali-daling pick up eh, no? Ito yung isang example. Here is an example of the application of this balance scorecard system. From the, res from the results of the SWOT, the planner identifies all issues and problems that concerns the clientele. Remember, at the back of our mind is the vision statement. The vision of the Montessori School of Immaculate Conception is to be a lead institution in the formation of well-rounded individuals equipped with knowledge and skills, competencies, and desirable attitudes and values. So here are the top uh, issues and problems concerning the clientele, students and parents. First, dwindling enrollment. Problema ba yan? Very, very lean. Uh, pag walang enrollment, walang income. And everything decreases. Low student retention. So yan ay pinag-aaralan nating mabuti. Sometimes, sabi ko sa inyo, maganda ang, uh, magagaling ang mga faculty pero may problem tayo sa ibang areas. That has to be brought out. Huh? It affects student retention. May joker performance of students in government exams. Diniscuss ko na yan kanina. No? Lower income students lack of success. Uh, access, sorry, hindi success yan. Lack of access to scholarship programs. You know, not all students enrolled in the private schools are rich. And many students there are poor, but they are intelligent, deserving students for scholarship slots. Ngayon, kung wala tayong maibibigay na scholarship slots dyan, they have to transfer. Kaya, ginroup natin, ha? according to prioritization, according to perspective. Ulitin ko, itong lahat na ito nag-appear doon sa SWOT. You remember? The lahat, these four top issues all came from the SWOT, results of the SWOT analysis. All right. Any questions so far on clientele issues? If there's none, let me proceed to the next. Issues and problems that concern school personnel, faculty, non-teaching personnel, management, security forces. Okay? Ito nakalagay. Need for more attractive marketing strategies. Sometimes the school is not known in the community. So how will you be able to get the, uh, a good share of the school age population? Of course, if you ask me, ang pinakamagandang uh, a way of attracting uh, uh, students to come to your school is sana yung school ninyo has established a niche as a high-performing school. Pag nag-academic competitions, dapat nasa top three lagi yung school. No? In, here in Bulacan, meron tayong competition in math, Science, English, uh, AP, General Information, meron pa nga Miss Bulprisa na tinatawag, meron pa tayong sports, kina kailangan ay talagang uh, nagpe-perform mabuti ang school. Okay, decrease in program revenues affects sustainability of operation. Ito yung collection efficiency. Nasa strategy yan. How do you collect? Tuition from parents. You have to think of very good strategies. No? Another one is indifference of some faculty and non-teaching personnel. You know, it's not easy to deal with parents in private schools. Uh, sorry to mention, many parents, lahat, in private schools are very demanding. They even put their fingers on the way teachers teach in the school. And dami nila ang kino-complain, and dami nila ang kino-question. And they try to meddle with internal affairs sometimes. There are there are a few parents who who, who do that, who do that. 
No? And unless the faculty and the non-teaching personnel are able to handle the situation very well, baka may problema tayo sa kliyente. And finally, stiffer competitions from nearby private school. Tanganta ka sa school ninyo. Bakit hirap na hirap kayong kumuha? Samantalang sa kabilang private school, may deadline ng enrollment. Two days enrollment for grade one. So one day enrollment for grade two. Pag hindi ka umabot, deferred na yung, school, yung anak mo. Nagpipila-pila ang mga eskwela roon. While in your school, your teachers and non-teaching personnel are finding it difficult to get their enrollees. There must be reason for that. Okay, that has to be discovered by management. Okay, uh, steeper competitions. No? Need for more attractive marketing strategies, decrease in program revenues, complacency or indifference of some teachers and non-teaching personnel, steep competition. It's a private school. Now, let me go to the next. Finance. Ano yung mga karaniwang pro problema na nako? Ito yung top four. Inefficient receivable management. Malaki yung uncollected tuition and miscellaneous fees. So malaking problema yan. Because as I mentioned to you, if parents do not pay their obligations regularly or monthly, teachers have to be paid monthly. Yun ang hindi mo pwedeng hindi ibigay. Yung sweldo ng teachers every month. If that happens, Happens, you have a big problem in your school. Okay, so not enough revenues. Siyempre, kung kukonti ang school ang nag-enroll, kukonti ang tuition na makukulat. Kukonti ang miscellaneous fees. Bababa -ba -ba ang auxiliary income like canteen management, sales from books, and all that. Effect of economic downturn. Ito yung biglang-bigla na lang na kamukha nang nag-pandemic. So many people lost their jobs. And therefore, the parents cannot pay their tuition. Wala silang trabaho eh. So how do you handle that? That's one issue, no? Effect of economic downturn. Lower income students lack of access to scholarship program. Would be another. Dito naman ang ginagawa, eh, siyempre kung ang may bibigyan lang ng FAPE or, de or debt ed ay 50 scholarship slots. But so many students are deserving of scholarship of programs. What do you do? Anong posibleng gawin? Ala, request ka sa debt ed, request ka sa FAPE, talaga yun lang ang maibigay. Eh. But so many students are demanding. Ano ang options natin, my dear co-teachers? Can anyone speak? I'm waiting for your suggestion. <laughs> Naubos na yung scholarship slot ng debt ed at FAPE. So many are still asking. How do you resolve it? Anyone? Can I have a piece of your crystal thoughts? Paano malulunasan yan? Hi, sir. Yes, please. Uh, Hello, Cecil. Yeah. Welcome, Cecil. How are you? Nice I'm, to see you. Yes, Doc. <laughs> uh, sir, at Doc, at the moment, for example, sa DepEd, we have alternative learning system, no? So, huh? we have uh, schools din naman sa private schools that they can't afford then uh, to go on sa school simply because may scarcity ng resources. So, what That's we did... Right. We tapped NGOs, we tapped yes. uh, benefactors na, uh, who are really uh, committed enough para matulungan yung bata. So, nag-environment... Nag su successful alumni, no? Uh, <laughs> Opo, Where yes, sir. Tap, no? We have one benefactor. So, nagkaroon po ang DepEd, for example, sa mga private schools. We help them to look for uh, benefactors nila. One student, one benefactor, and then we document that. So, oh, that's a very alone, nice experience to share. So we really here. tap the environment. Yes. Uh, uh, successful alumni, yes, sir. NGOs. No? Kaya lalo na yung maganda yan, nakita niya, one benefactor per scholar. Okay. So scholarship slot. That has to be, that can only be done effectively by, you know, creative 
educational planners. So lahat dyan, kinoconsider natin. Pero ang what I would like to uh, you to see is how the balance scorecard is done. Ang daling analyzen. You see, ang next nyan, after presenting the issues, we will now come to think of strategies. Kaya kita nyo, dugtong-dugtong, ang daling-daling gawin ng strategic development plans. It's so easy to explain. All right, if you don't have questions about this, a finance, here are the strategies. Remember, these are the issues. Okay, on the left side, these are the top issues pertinent to the dimensions, clientele, present and prospective students. Remember, these were the issues and problems that we identified early. Okay, and what can be done about each issue? These suggestions, these strategies came from the, from the faculty, from the personal themselves. One of them is implementation of administrator-led specific departmental marketing effort. Para bang pinalalabas yung mga teachers and non-teaching personnel to do recruitment in their own area of responsibility. Everybody has to help. Particularly in the private school. Public, wala tayong problema dito. Cecil, sakit ang ulo mo sa dami ng eskwela mo sa public, di ba? Hindi ka mukha sa private school. 25 lang ang maximum namin. But so many classes could not reach 25. Kaya 20 to 25 lang. Tapos meron pang hindi nagbabayad ng tuition. Ako, kaya laking problema. Alright? So how do we resolve it? Suggestion from teachers. Ito, tinapata, no? You see, tingnan nyo yung pagkakayong alignment. Administrator-led program-specific departmental marketing. You see that? That's one possible solution to dwindling enrollment. Second uh, issue is low student retention. Suggestion from the teachers. Implementation of retention management system and student advisory program for all departments. Para bang may ina-assign ka na class advisor aside from the faculty. O kaya year advisor. Para pag, when students have problems, they do not immediately drop out of schools. They do not immediately complain about uh, to their parents. But there is somebody there who is willing to listen and give good advice to students encountering problems in school. Actually, totoo yan, hindi lang yan sa grade school and high school. Eh. Even in higher ed, even in the graduate school, uh, you all have experience doing, uh, encountering a lot of problems in the writing of your thesis and dissertation. Correct? But when there is an able advisor and statistician who is willing to sit with you. Aswerte kayo, meron kayong Dr. Alvin Nuki. <laughs> who, Hi. Yes. Nagbasa ka nga? Yeah, meron kayong ano, meron kayong Dr. Alvin Nuki who is very patient in doing advising work. Tingnan natin po ito. May joker student performance in board exams. Ano yung kanilang suggestion? Government exam readiness program using individualized monitoring and enrichment strategy throughout the curriculum under a designated advisor. Essentially, ang ibig sabihin nito, bago ibigay yung NEET or yung NKI, nag administer ang school ng parallel exams developed by teachers guided by depth ed sample exams. No? Guided by Uh, meron kasing mga nabibili tayong reviewer. Eh. Okay? Uh, sa school yan. Para bang gumagawa ng parallel. You, you binigyan natin, binibigyan natin na exposure sa student. How effectively one takes a government exam? Reading directions clearly. Following specified directions. And how to select options no? from four plausible choices. Piniprepare yung mga bata. Kaya... The more guidance given to the student, the better the chances of getting high scores in the board, in the government exam. Hindi naman board, government exam. Of course, in the private school, issue ito madalas. Poor English communication skills of students. 
Siyempre mag-uumpisa yan sa ating mga teachers. When parents don't hear teachers speaking very well. When students don't hear teachers speaking very well. Okay, tuwan-tuwa yung mga parents, no? Pagka uuwi yung mga eskwela, mga anak nila, and there is a new vocabulary learned, and they hear a good sentence structure. No? Nung nasa Montessori School ako, eh, akala mo ang gagaling ng mga bata. Eh. Because they are trained, no? nakalagay doon, uh, English speaking zone. No one is allowed to talk in Filipino. When you are in the classroom or at the corridor. Basta may mga area identified. So you will find small kids. Takbo na takbo niyan. And you will say, where are you going? I'm gonna go to the canteen. I need some biscuits. Ikaw, ikaw yung parents, you hear students talking that way. Ay, sasabihin na po quality schools ito. O, tapos makikita pa nila, English speaking zone. Mga ganon. Kaya nga sinasabi natin, no? Continuously improving faculty staff proficiency in written and oral communication or offering bridge program in English. Finally, lower income students lack of access to scholarship program. Suggestion, offering attractive financing options to students. Expanded scholarship, implementation of expanded scholarship programs, tapping alumni and other prospective donors. This is what Cecily is saying earlier. Okay? That can be done. So makikita ninyo, huh? for every important issue identified, there is a well-meaning strategy formulated by well-meaning teachers. Let me go to the next perspective. Personal. Ito napakahalaga. Some unfriendly frontliners. Usually sa school, sino-sino yan? Bihira yung may problem sa advisors. Eh. Pero sino ka naman dahil kinukomplain ng mga parents and students? Sa school, security guards, registrar. <laughs> Cecil, registrar. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> na, not all, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pero yung experiences mo in the schools where you've been before, ha? Uh, alam, yes, sir. Well, ha? You know what I'm saying? Let's not mention me. Okay. <laughs> Pero ito ang ginawa. Kaya ang strategy ng school is to conduct a continuing formation program making courtesy. Sorry. Bakit biglang bumalik? Sorry. Making courtesy as a basic stewardship mandate of every personal to be embedded in regular performance evaluation. Okay? So yung... Uh, uh, kumbaga, yung relationship of personal, non-teaching personal, and teachers to their students kasama sa evaluation. Difficulty of attracting and retaining faculty. Performance evaluation that rewards excellence is implemented in school. I turn over rate of teachers to public schools. How do you, how, how do you address that? You offer attractive, equitable remuneration benefits. You know, there are some private schools. Aside from the retirement benefit no, that SSS and Pagibig would offer, meron din silang school-level retirement program. Uh, pag merong ganyan ng school ninyo, ang management ninyo, ay, that's a very good point for, for the teachers. No? Salary scheme not too competitive. So you offer salary package uh, competitive to what competitor schools are offering. Okay, that's for the person. In other words, uh, uh, we do not have the luxury of time. So what, I'm, what I would like to tell you is for every issue on the left side, the teachers will come up with workable strategies. Need for more attractive marketing strategies. Implement more aggressive marketing strategies. Finding the right intersection between mission and changing market demands. No? Yung mga gumagawa pa ng admission office. Eh. Merong recruitment officer ang school na umiikot, nagsasalita sa mga schools. No? All that. So, uh, look at this. I don't intend to read all one by one. We may not have the luxury of time. 
But what I would like to emphasize, can you follow me? For every issue on the left side, tatapatan natin ng doable strategy on the right side. Is that clear to my co-teachers? Loud and clear. Okay. Yes, so, clear, sir. I will not read it one by one, but that's what I would like you to do. No? This is what we mean by applying the balance scorecard system. Balance because you consider all important elements. Students or clientele, finance, operations, and what's the other one? Uh, personal. Clientele, personal, finance, and operation problems. Okay. So, ito yung summary ng operations issues and strategies. The summary of finance issues and strategies. Kunin lang natin yung unang. Kaligay dyan. Inefficient receivable management. How do you address it? Suggestion nila. Finance office to monitor and follow up on past due accounts. Huwag antayin na mag ending school year. Tsaka pa lang mag, mag monitor Only to find out that so many students have not paid their bill. Mahirap na makabayad yan pagka napakalaki na ng uh, balance. Okay? Charging for past due accounts. That can be implemented. All right. So that's it, no? Uh, ito, not enough revenues from tuition. Problema na lahat ng private school yan. Nakalagay dito. Diver diversify income streams on an institutional and departmental level. Ano ba ang possible income streams sa school aside from tuition and miscellaneous sa private? Even in sa public school, siguro yung operation of the canteen could be one. Yeah. At pag maganda ang management ng canteen, you know, I was a public school principal before. Ang ganda na minanage kung mabuti yung aming canteen through the uh, leadership of our home economics teachers. You know what teachers, been, I do not handle the, the funds of the canteen. No, somebody, one teacher is assigned to handle the funds. All teachers of the school attending seminars. I have to pay all their registration fees and they get transportation and meal allowance. Kaya pag pinadadala ka, walang reklamo. Eh baka padadala mo sa mga seminar, teachers spend their own money. O sasabihin ng principal, ay hindi pwedeng gamitin yung pera ng kantin. Ginagamit natin sa ganito yan. Ginagamit natin sa ganito. In other words, you are telling the teachers, spend your own money. Eh wala nga extra money eh. So that's what we're saying. Kaya diversify income streams. No? Manage the kantin very well. Yung iba nagtatayo ng, uh, what do you call it? Schools and office supplies. Ang mga bata bibili ng libro sa private school doon sa cooperative nila. Including notebooks and everything. There are other income streams na pwedeng gawin. All right. So that's it, no? Again, tatapatan natin ng creative strategy ang bawat issue. This is for finance. And now, we will now summarize the results of the strategy uh, uh, we will now summarize the results of the, uh, what do you call it? The SWOT, the SOAR, the balanced scorecard systems and strategy maps through a timetable, uh, para bang may gun chart na gagawin ngayon. Okay, summarize natin. No? Clientele, here are the issues. Okay? Strategies to be implemented for every issue. Ayan, sa tapat. And when do you implement? Ano ang timeline? Okay. That's very easy to pick up, no? Uh, yung ba ginagamitan ng gun chart para mas maganda? Okay? Very critical, of course, in strategic planning will be uh, development and formulations of good activities and programs and projects. No? This phase of the planning process asks and answers the questions what activities do we have to do? And are these activities feasible and viable? When we say program, this refers to functions and activities necessary for the performance of a major purpose which the school is established. Pag sinabi natin project, more specific ito. It is a component of a program covering homogeneous group of activities that result in the accomplishment 
of an identified output. In other words, a group of project may constitute a program. Okay. Ayan, ano? There are other things that have to be cleared. Project identification starts from project ideas which are perceived to be effective solution to development problems and unsatisfied demands and needs of clients. Uh, you end up with, with a long list of programs and projects. Kaya it is important to implement project prioritization because you cannot implement the programs and projects simultaneously. Now, this means, uh, given the very common constraints of scarcity of resources, it is normally logical to implement, at, uh, it is illogical to implement at the same time all programs and projects. No? The process for determining which projects will be scheduled first and which will be uh, next no? and which project will be implemented last is what we call project prioritization okay it is actually a process of determining which projects will be scheduled for implementation normally not possible to implement all projects at the same time which have been identified screened and packaged no? and certainly the other important uh, part of the strategic plan will be the budget so you have to put Para ang management mapaghandaan din, the administrators, the planner have to indicate how much budget is needed to be able to effectively implement a program or a project. How much money or fund is available or allowable for each program. Budgeting actually is defined... As the process of allocating scarce financial resources for programs, projects, and activities to enable the school to carry out formulated goals and objectives. Okay. Uh, in the end, you end up with a summary. Tayshina sabi ko siya dapat may gun chart. Okay. Kailang uh, the, the spaces are too small. I cannot, uh, you know, congest the presentation. Pero kitang-kita natin dito, key result areas, ito yung sinasabi natin na yung quadrant kanina. Clientele, ganon. Uh, goals and objectives, you are familiar with this, I'm sure. No? Activities to be implemented, who will be in charge of the project implementation, estimated, estimated budget needed. And then, isinishade lang natin, June, July, August, up to March. And you indicate the performance target. You do it for all key result areas, all programs and projects. Ito yung summary ng strategic plan of the school. All right. So maybe the remaining time we can spend for some uh, brainstorming session or open forum regarding the making of strategic development plans. The table is now open for your comments. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much, Dr. Rinaldo Cruz, for that very informative um, topic about strategic planning, which I'm sure every educational management student would benefit from your discussion. Kasi itong mga to, they're prepared. Uh, if they're not prepared, baka sila ay mga heads na or mga administrators na in their own respective um, units or departments. We will now entertain some um, clarificatory questions or comments uh, from our uh, students in the educational management and administration and supervision program. Anyone? Uh, ano ba yung clarification? Was it clear to you how to do strategic planning? <laughs> Do you find the use of the balanced scorecard system in strategy math meaningful in planning? Mas madali kaysa puro text, no? And easy to under to implement, easy to understand. And actually, the template that was presented by Dr. Ray, you, you can actually utilize that 
um, except that you can just change the uh, the, the contents uh, that is that are applicable to your current situation, especially on uh, the conduct of SWOT analysis. No, because uh, right now, Doctor Ray, majority of our uh, participants are coming from the Department of Education. Yeah, that's right. So, public school teachers or um, mga heads or principals. Uh, but soon will so soon will be they will be administrators and this is one of the responsibilities that they have to do. Yes, yes. Strategic plan. That's right. So can we uh, get some comments or clarificatory questions from our uh, from our participants for today? Yes, Doc. Uh, thank you yes. so much, po, Dr. Ray. It was really substantial. Actually, uh, I was used. To dun sa SWOT eh. So, mm -hmm. from the very start kasi, uh, we're used dun sa um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. What is quite really challenging is as to where or as to when can I identify that this is strength opportunity and this is strength threat. You know, the demarcation line eh. Kasi, uh -huh. uh, uh, medyo, medyo, tri uh, medyo tricky din kasi, Doc. Eh. Talagang kailangan, we, we need really guidance of like you and Dr. Uh, Vin na Talagang uh, gamay. Kasi oh. this is the first time that I have seen. Nung nakikinig ako, Doc, sabi ko, uh, what is the demarcation line between this is a strength opportunity and this is a strength threat? Right. Because right. it's under the strength, no? Right. And even the, the weakness. So, I'm really trying to read, no? And then uh, go back dun sa mga notes na nakikita ko. And then sabi ko talagang it really takes time para makita ko. Kukutuhan kasi talaga eh. Para makita kung uh, dito ka sa category and then this one. But definitely, right. Doc, it was really uh, substantial and very helpful. No? Dun sa Thank you very much. Thank you ko. very much, uh, Cecil. Who will soon be Dr. Cecil Cruz. <laughs> With the help of the best people na nandito po. That's why I'm here. Nandito yung mga mentors ko eh. Dr. Alvin working with <laughs> yeah. you very closely. Yeah. yeah, at the moment po, is I'm uh, under po sa alternative learning system of DepEd. I'm good. Yeah, I'm handling po. I'm an education program specialist ng, ng DepEd natin for the ALS. Though we have also the ARP, no? yung readiness po na na-mention ninyo kanina, Sa private school, there is what you call the readiness test para maging ready sila sa, sa national. Same with the alternative, sir. We have the yeah. AERT. For them to be ready for the national test, which is the A&E exam na binibigay ng national. Kasi make or very, break. very important development activity for any school, public or yes. private. Uh, administrator's primary responsibility is to establish a niche in the community yes, as sir. a high-performing institution. Thank you, uh, Cecil. Thank you, Dr. Cecil. Any more comments or clarifications from other uh, students in the MA and EDD programs? Meron pa ba? Wala na. So that only means to say, Dr. Ray, that you were able to clearly um, explain to them how to conduct a strategic planning. And for sure, uh, magagamit nila yan kasi they oh, are man. under the program management or administration and supervision. I, I'm sure that uh, the public school administrators have been submitting strategic plans. Pero ang suggestion namin ni Dr. Nuki, inject ninyo yung new ideas. The use of the balanced scorecard system. How do we analyze uh, weaknesses, threats? How do we provide strategies aligned to the basic issues and problems? And that is adding a dash of, uh, you know, a, a facilitation in the, the prepare, preparation of your strategic plan. Instead of all text na kay hirap basahin, hirap intindihin. You can make it more interesting, more creative if you inject the balanced scorecard system and strategy. Okay. Uh, if there are no more questions, Dr. Albinuki, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity once again given me. And to all my colleagues in the graduate schools, the doctoral and the masteral students in education, thank you so much for your kind listening and I wish you good luck in your studies.
All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Ray. And we will see you again next time kasi may another topic pa tayo. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Basta, you, aking, basta aking binigyan ng assignment ni Dr. Alvin. <laughs> thank you po, Dok. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dok. 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 All right, so for those who are in the EDD program, we will have another set of uh, meeting for the presentation of the remaining um, proposals, no? Because not everyone was able to uh, present their proposal paper. So tataposin natin yon. And um, for those who are enrolled in statistics, we will have um, one session next time. But uh, what uh, we're going to do now first is to do an asynchronous learning for those who are enrolled in statistics. I, um, uh, I ask you to read or listen to the lecture about discrete, the introduction to statistics, no? Nasa GC natin, I already forwarded. Yes, sir. Lecture on introduction to statistics. No, you have an assignment. And then for uh, those who are enrolled in um, research and EDUC 208 or seminar on research, um, kindly stay for some uh, announcement and uh, some uh, meeting. No? So maybe no, that's it. thank you so much. No? Mm -hmm. For those who are enrolled in uh, research and seminar on research or thesis seminar, May I, may I ask you to stay for um, 10 more minutes for some more announcement. For those who are in, okay, the, for the, for those who are in the EDD and um, statistics classes, I would like to say thank you. I hope that the topic that was discussed with Dr. Ray could help you in your future thesis writing because these topics are, can, can be an, an example no? Sample topics that can be used for your um, thesis writing later on. <clears throat> and for the EDD program, I will post another announcement on our next meeting. And I hope that the remaining students, EDD students, who are not able to present their proposal paper yet, no? sana matapos na natin next time because um, the EDD program will end by January 30. That will be the last day of the EDD program, January 30. Hope to see you again. Yung ating mga EDD students, nakita ko na, nandito ko, na, nakita ko nandito present naman. Okay po, Doc. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Salamat po. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, Ms. Julian. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, po. Thank you, Doc. Noted po. Thank you. See you. See you po, Doc. Right. Have a nice day po. Yeah, salamat. See you po, Doc. All right. So for those who are enrolled in uh, research, and yes, seminar and research, kayo na lang po yung may yung ito, no? Methods of research. Methods of research and seminar on research. Kayo na lang okay. po yung dito. Methods of research pala po. Apo, methods of research and seminar and research kindly stay for a while for some few announcements and reminders. Ah, uh, methods of research. Okay po. Okay na. Ayan, so ano yun. Okay na. Siguro na yun yung mga nasa research na. So, for the methods of research, I also attached a video about introduction to research in data privacy app. And actually, yung gagawin natin ngayon, it's more of, uh, for, for methods of research, it's more of asynchronous learning. All you need to do is to um, listen and learn from the videos that we have in the YouTube channel. And then, ang gagawin na lang natin, we will create an FB page where you are going to um, submit or post your topic for approval. Because if you listen to our um, recorded lecture, ano nga ulit yung first step in doing a research paper sa mga nasa methods of research? Ano nga ulit yung first step na ginagawa? Step one, what is the very first step that we do when we... Identifying... We identify a... Identifying the topic. 
Happy. Right. That's the very first thing that you need to do. For those who are enrolled in methods of research, you need to identify topics. You know? And topics would mean independent and dependent variables. These are variables that are going to be used in your research paper that are aligned to administration and supervision. <clears throat> now, later on, ipapapost ko sa sa GC, yung mga topics na previously approved na, lalo na sa EDUC 208, yung mga title or topics na na-approve na na Mikawain College. Kasi ang rule na Mikawain College, kapag na-approve na siya before, ibig sabihin na, na, na nagamit na ng previous student, ay hindi na siya pwedeng maupit. Kasi syempre, we are in the new normal. Karamihan ang gustong gawin tungkol sa modular, tungkol sa online learning, blended learning. Kaya lang, um, ang, ang nakakalungkot lang, marami na po ang nakapag-propose ng ganun topic and therefore, definitely when you propose that kind of topic, it will be disapproved. So sayang lang. So para hindi masayang yung effort ninyo, we will make it sure na uh, ipopost namin, Chris, ipopost natin lahat ng approved title na simula nung last SEM para hindi nyo na maulit when you identify a topic. And as I mentioned, when you identify a topic, it should be an, an independent and dependent variable. So, yung meaning ng IV and DV, kung nakinig kayo dun sa lecture ko, I'm sure nakuha nyo na yun. You have to ensure also that we, when you identify an IV and a DV or variables of the study, they must be measurable they must be measurable. Meaning to say, if you have an access to EBSCO host, meron na po kayong access sa EBSCO? Pa-thumbs up nga po yung meron ng access, yung nakakuha na ng user ID and password. Thumbs up lang po sa mga meron ng uh, user ID and password ng EBSCO. O yung iba hindi nagka-thumbs up, ibig sabihin wala pa. Kasi yung, yung EBSCO na yon ay... Uh, kailangan nyo yun para makapag-download kayo ng literature or articles that are related to your topic, especially for those who are in the EDUC 208 program. Kasi yung EDUC 208 program, uh, kailangan makapag-oral defense kayo or proposal defense kayo this trimester. So when you write your chapters 1 and 2 for both uh, uh, students who are enrolled in methods of research, Sa EDOC 208, checking na lang. Sa methods of research, gagawin pa lang. You must be guided by the format, the form and style of Mekawayan College. Ngayon, uh, para makita nyo yung form and style, nasa video din po yun. Papakinggan nyo na lang kung paano sinusulat ang chapters 1 and 2 ng Mekawayan College. Ano po? And all other things, all other topics that are related to um, related to research are already provided in our YouTube channel. Ibig sabihin, ang gagawin nyo na lang pag may free time kayo, pwede nyo nang pakinggan na lang. Kaya ang gagawin natin, imbis na mag-discuss ako ng research, ay mag invite na lang ako ng mga speakers or I will also talk about some topics related to administration and supervision. Kasi ang napapansin ko, um, nakakalimutan nyo yung mga topics ninyo sa administration and supervision. Parang wala kayong maalala. Ang naalala nyo lang palagi, modular learning. <laughs> At saka walang kamatayang academic performance. Uh, for your information, napakadami pa rin topic about administration and supervision. No? One of them nga, yung kanina din discuss ni Dr. Ray, uh, it's about um, uh, strategic planning. Meron din tinatawag na human resource management yung or personal management. Jen, papat ka ng papel ko yung pinapa ano ko sa'yo. Yung mga topics. Marami pang topics na pwede kayong mga, mga pag, ano, pagpilian. No? You do not uh, focus only on um, modular approaches kasi yun ay well, ano na, well subscribed na ng mga previous uh, presenters. That's why I will be inviting also some uh, speakers about human resource management, personal management, yung mga legal issues in education, ethical standards in doing scientific research, 
kung kayo ay nasa public school, you are under the Civil Service Commission, tama po ba? Ayun, we will try to review some uh, civil service uh, regulations, laws and regulations, no? And then we will, we will also be discussing about the importance of ICT in education and other topics that are related to administration and supervision. So my appeal to everyone, uh, while you are under research or thesis writing or thesis seminar rather, you go back to the subjects, to the major subjects that you already encountered. Kasi yun ang babalikan nyo. Doon kayo kukuha ng mga topics. No? Doon kayo. Maraming topics ang ano, maraming, maraming pwede maging topics for research. Hindi lang po modular approach. Kaya yung mga magpapacheck sa, ano, sa January, for EDOC 2, 8, Meron tayong checking no, on January 20. Mag-start tayo ng 12 noon. So magdadala kayo, kayo ng full paper ninyo, yung chapters 1 and 2 ninyo. Kung malalagyan nyo na ng preliminaries, the better. Kung malalagyan nyo, kung ma-append nyo na yung instrument, the best. Kasi ibig sabihin, kapag may instrument na, pag may questionnaire na, doable na ang inyong research paper. Please take note, that the doability of a research paper is determined, especially if it is quantitative research, that is determined by the availability of questionnaire, of the questionnaire, or instrument, or data gathering tool. Mas mahirap kasi na mag-identify kayo ng topic, tapos mag-develop kayo na sarili yung questionnaire. If you develop, it's not, there's nothing wrong developing your own instrument, your own questionnaire. But you need to undergo the tedious process of subjecting the instrument for validity and reliability testing. Kasi dapat ang instrument, bago gamitin, it must be valid and reliable. Kaya ang sinasuggest ko palagi, you browse the EBSCO host, meron naman kayong ID and password, Doon pala makakita na kayo ng mga possible questionnaire. And then, paano nyo malalaman na reliable? Basahin nyo yung under ng instrumentation ng paper. Usually, IMRAD format lang yun. Pag sinabing IMRAD, introduction, methods, results, and discussion. Mga 10 to 15 pages lang ang laman noon. No? What you can do is to uh, read the methodology part of the research paper. In the methodology part, there is always a discussion about the reliability of the instrument, which is represented by the Cronbach's Alpha. Cronbach's Alpha. And Cronbach's Alpha is ranging from 0 to 1. 0 to 1. The more the Cronbach's Alpha gets closer to 1, the higher the reliability. So, ibig sabihin, ang acceptable na Cronbach's Alpha ay 0.7. Yun ang hahanapin ninyo. 0.7 and above. Ibig sabihin, reliable yung questionnaire. Kasi mas madaling mag-adapt kesa mag-develop ka ng sarili mo. Kaya I would suggest that you adapt a reliable instrument already instead of developing your own instrument and uh, making yourselves difficult no and making your life pala difficult by subjecting the instrument for validity and reliability testing so um for some for the methods of research class uh, for the meantime i'd like you to uh, i'd like you to do asynchronous learning muna all you need to do is just to um listen to all the the the, beat, the lectures the recorded lectures on youtube and then uh, later on, I will make a highlight or discussion on how to write chapters one and two. Although meron naman na doon, i-amplify ko na lang. If you think that the, that the video is not enough for you to learn uh, writing chapters one and two, we will make a, a synchronous learning or synchronous lecture about writing chapters one and two. Because our um, end goal the ultimate goal of this subject, the methods of research, is to come up with chapters one and two. 
yun ang ating ultimate goal. So that when you reach your EDUC 208, ay meron na kayong ipapa-defense, isasubmit for defense. Now, just in case you are enrolled in both subjects, methods of research and EDUC 208, you need to do, you need to work double time. Kasi habang nagbubuo ka ng chapters 1 and 2, nagahabol ka din para doon sa iyong uh, defense. Because if this, this, if this trimester you are not able to uh, defend your chapters 1 and 2, you will re-enroll the subject next trimester. Ibig sabihin, hindi kayo papasa sa EDOC 208 kapag kayo po ay hindi nakapag-proposal defense. That is why part of my assistance to all of you is uh, my personal checking of uh, your paper. Personal checking yun of your paper. Kaya ang, ang nag-iisang face-to-face lang natin ay yung checking ng chapters 1 and 2 ninyo. Dadali nyo rito yung printed copy ng chapters 1 and 2 ninyo together with the preliminaries. Pinost ko na rin po sa GC natin kung anong laman ng preliminaries, kung anong laman ng chapter 1, at kung ano rin yung laman ng chapter 2. No? How to write the contents ay nasa videos na po, nasa recorded lectures na po natin yun. Tapos ang gagawin natin every meeting, it was, it's, it, this is going to be just an open um, parang ano, parang um, uh, question and answer portion na lang gagawin natin based on what you've read. If you remember, I posted a recorded lecture on, on our GC. So this is the perfect time for you to ask questions related to the discussion about um, research. And sa EDOC 208, this is the perfect time for you to ask questions related to the contents of chapters 1 and 2. Kaya pinaiwan ko kayo. So yung lecture ay nasa video na, today is just a, a clarificatory question, questioning. Meron ba na gusto mag ng clarifications as regard to what you have listened from the YouTube? Or sa EDOC 208, meron bang gusto magtanong regarding sa kanilang uh, proposal defense or regarding sa kanilang topic? Ngayon, kung gusto niyo magpa-approve ng topic, ang pwede nating gawin, kasi kung sa GC, uh, matatakpan na, matatabunan. Ang pwede nating gawin ay yung nasa EDOC 208, uh, mag-a-assign tayo na gumawa ng FB page kung saan pwede kayo mag-post ng inyong IVDV doon. Tapos, uh, doon ko sabihin kung yung topic is approved or not. Kung ayaw niyong gumawa ng FB page, yung pagpunta niyo rito, yung mga nasa EDOC 208, ano, pagpunta niyo rito, doon niyo malalaman whether approved or not yung inyong ginawang paper. Para pagdating sa defense, ay uh, mababa na yung mortality rate. Ibig sabihin, lesser chance of getting disapproval. Kasi more or less, na-scrutinize ko na. Pero ang gagawin niyo mamaya, ipopost ko sa EDOC 208 at EDOC 202 GC, ipapapost ko yung mga approved titles already. Basahin nyo lang isa-isa, kapag meron kayong topic na parang naulit na, parang the same or title na parang the same na, na, na nandoon, ay huwag nyo nang ituloy kasi panigurado, madi-disapprove yun. No? Ah, sige, I'm now opening the floor for questioning. Or questioning. Sure, ako po. Yes. <coughs> Dok Nuki, ano po ba yung mga sample questions po na tinatanong kapag nag-defense na? Uh, usually, uh, the panel members would, would ask you why would you like to conduct the study? And they would always ask you uh, whether you were able to exhaustively review the literature. Kasi pag nakita nila na konti ang literature mo, ibig sabihin yung paper mo ay... Uh, hindi substantial ang pagkaka-review na literature. Konti lang yung review of lead as evidenced by limited number of references. Doon ka nila tatanungin. No? Pero tutulungan ko na kayo sa pag-formulate ng title. Pag pumunta kayo rito sa EDOC 208, title, uh, framework, um, major problem, specific problem. No? Pati research design, minsan ibinibigay ko na. Yun ang advantage kapag nakipag-one-on-one -on -one checking kayo sa akin kasi i-dictate ko na sa inyo 
kung ano yung mga dapat makita sa paper ninyo. Pero kadalasan, uh, going back to your question, ang itinatanong nila kung ano lang yung laman ng papel ninyo. So mahalaga, ano yung mahalaga? Alam ninyo yung laman ng papel ninyo. Yun ang mahalaga. Kung galing kayo sa ibang school na ang gamit ay chapters 1 to 5, ang MC ay chapters 1 to 4 lang. Pinagkaiba lang kung ang proposal sa ibang school ay chapters 1, 2, and 3, sa Mekawain College, chapters 1 and 2. Bakit? Yung review of related literature, nakapasok siya sa chapter 1. Ibig sabihin, after ng introduction, review of related literature na. Kaya yung dating chapter 3 na methodology ng ibang school, naging chapter 2, naging methods and procedures ng Mekawain College. Wala namang malaking pinagkaiba nalipat lang yung literature sa chapter 1. But all the rest, the same. In terms of principle and uh, style in writing. Mr. Alcantara, nasagot ko ba yung tanong mo? Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Welcome. Meron pa po bang mag, ano, magtatanong? Good afternoon, sir. Hi, yes. Cindy Makato po. Mahina po yung boses. Sino po sila? Cindy Makato po. Mahina. Lakas naman ng konti yung audio mo. O baka malaya yung mic. Doc, ang tanong ko lang po, malakas na po ba? Uh, Cindy? Cindy Makato, ikaw ba yun? Sino po yun? Ah, sige, sige nga po, please. Try mo nga yung audio mo, uh, Miss Cindy, kung, ano, kung okay na. Hello, Doc. Ayan, sige, that's better. Okay. Ang tanong ko lang po, Doc, yung timeline po natin sa pag-proposal, di ba sabi niya po kanina, kapag po hindi kami nakapag-proposal this time, magre-enroll po kami. Yes. Uh, just want to know lang po kung hanggang kailan po ba yung pinaka-deadline, yung, kung baga yung target dapat na, namin, na for example po, up to January or end of February, halimbawa po ganun. Yung isa din. Po, meron din kami <coughs> alam namin kung proposal baga gano'n kami sa pader. Oo. Uh -oh. Usually, ang trimester, January, February, March, April, mag -e end ng April 10. And pag sinabing April 10, dapat submitted na yung grade ninyo sa Mekawain College. So dapat, ang huling defense ay April 3. Para April 10 ay uh, may grade na na maisubmit. Kasi after the proposal defense, the three panel members will give you a grade. Will give you grades. Three yun. I-average yun. Yung average nun, yun ang makukuha yung grade sa EDOC 208. Plus, you will not receive the grade kung meron mga recommendations yung mga panel members. Ibig sabihin, uh, you need to include <clears throat> the recommendations provided to you by the panel members before grade will be given to you. Thank you, Doc. Alright. Sige. Kaya lang, ang sabi ko nga, kung mas maaga kayo, mas maganda para mas maaga kayo makarelax. No? Pangalawa, mas mahaba-haba yung time ninyo sa pag input ng mga recommendations if there are. Pang-apat, kung pangatlo, pangatlo, ay kung um, let's say tapos na kayo ng kompre, tapos this is right na kayo next then, pwede na kayo mag, kung approve na talaga at, at binigyan na kayo ng bas, -bas ng advisor, pwede na kayong mag-advance na data gathering kasi Uh, the most challenging part of research right now is data gathering because of the pandemic. Kasi when you say um, pandemic, of course, face-to-face -face is definitely not allowed. <clears throat> so you need to come up with online survey form or on Google, Do Go Google Docs or Google Forms. And ang pinaka uh, challenging doon is uh, how to motivate your respondents to uh, reply to to your ano to your request. Kaya mas maaga, mas maganda para makapag data gather agad kayo. No? Tapos after the proposal defense, bibigyan kayo ng critique ng Mekawain College 
Ibig sabihin ng critic, um, aside from advisor, isa rin siya sa mga mag-check at magbibigay ng mga recommendations sa paper ninyo. Kaya uh, mabilis kayo makatapos kasi may advisor na, may critic pa. May full guidance kayo in writing your research paper. So therefore, yung mga nasa methods of research, I suggest na umpisahan nyo nang gawin yung chapters 1 into this trimester. Para yung magiging output ninyo this trimester, kung hindi man kayo naka-enroll pa ng EDOC 208, next trimester, hindi na, hindi na kayo maghahabol magsulat ng chapters 1 and 2. Ang gagawin nyo na lang, magpapaschedule na lang kayo ng checking at kapag na-check ko na at na-approve ko na, proceed na kayo sa proposal defense. Yun ang advantage ng, ano, ng gumawa na ng chapters 1 and 2 sa methods pa lang. Alright? Any more question? Sir, good, good afternoon po. Yes po. Jonah. Sir, kaka-enroll ko lang po ngayon as in ngayong araw lang din po. So ano po ba yung both ano po, um, 202 tsaka 208? So ano po ba yung mga kailangan gawin? Kailangan po papasa? Or ano po? Ah, Alright. Miss Jonah, kung kaka-enroll mo lang ngayon, ikaw ay immediately isasama sa GC. May GC ang EDOC 202 at saka EDOC 208. Uh, ang gagawin mo lang po ay pa-backread na lang po kasi nandun yung mga announcements, nandun yung mga assignment na binigay. No? So ang gagawin lang is magka-catch up lang. Ang maganda naman may GC tayo kung saan naka-post doon kung ano yung mga gagawin. Actually, yung first assignment ninyo ay to uh, listen to the video that I uh, attached to the GC and you are going you go, you need to do a summary of the video actually submission na nga ngayon di ba kailan ba submission noon dapat ngayon so magi mamaya mag-check ako ng email ng mga nakapag-submit na ng ano ng summary ng video so uh, miss john na kung kaka-enroll man lang ngayon understandable naman yon uh, ipapahabol na lang kumbaga catch up na lang um okay po sir Sir, wala ka pa sa GC, Miss Jona, no? Uh, kanina, kanina ng alas 9 lang po ako na-add. Ngayon lang din po, ah, kaya nakainin po ako. The background hmm. po, no? Para, sir, para ako, ako, sir. Pati yung email address kung saan isi-send yung output ay uh, doon do natin, ano, doon yung titingnan. So yun yung... pa lang po yung pinaka-output na gagawin? Isa pa lang yung po. po. Sir, bali yung, ina yung sinasabi niyo po na yung proposal, hindi pa po yun yung gagawin namin. Tama po ba? Hindi pa. Or... Hindi lang muna sa mga lectures. Okay. Salamat, sir. Ay, Dr. Nyoki. Thank you po. No problem. <clears throat> Meron pa? Sir, no? na lang po. Good morning. Sir, ako po. Sir, pwede ko yun po yun. Teka lang. One at a time lang. Sino muna? Sir. Yes. Ah, sige po. Mauna na po si Imam. Uh, Miss Dela. Sige, kayo na po mauna. Sir, kasi po ka-enroll lang din po namin, ka-add lang po. Okay. Eh, kamukha po nang ngayon po yung pass nung ating first assignment clips. Paano po kami? Eh di ano, next, uh, next Saturday magdodoble ka na lang kasi magpo-post ako ulit ako ng another clip. <laughs> eh di, dalawa na yung sasabit mo next Saturday. Wala namang problema yun. Ah, ganun po. Okay. Uh, Thank you po, sir. Ang mahalaga, makahabol. At may, meron yung tinatawag na okay. Tapos, kapag nakarami na kayo ng pakikinig sa mga lectures, saka ako ngayon mag-discuss one time, big time discussion ng chapters 1 and 2 again. Although, nandun na yun eh. Pero, i-highlight ko, i-amplify ko lang how to write proposal chapters 1 and 2. All of you will be invited, of course, para mag-amplify ko lang yung writing so yung mga ngayon lang na at uh, no worries kasi opo ngayon lang po habol na lang catch up na lang kaya lang next <coughs> dalawang videos na isasubmit mo na <laughs> sir kayo din po ba yung prop namin sa etok 203 statistics opo meron din po yung GC noon Opo. At meron din itong video ng introduction to statistics doon na kailangan ding uh, panoorin or pakinggan. Bali po kayo po doon sa EDUC 202 sa Kato O3. Pareho po. Opo. Okay lang po. Basta ah. po, Sir Lynn, ako yung... Okay, okay po, Sir. 
Kasi pwede ka pong ano, pwede ka pong maghanap ng ibang prof. So, yes, yeah, si sir naman. <laughs> nagtatanong lang po sir kasi bago lang po ako. Kaya kasi, nagtatanong po talaga. Wala problema. Wala problema. Halata naman bago kayo, tingnan nyo, fresh na fresh kayo. Oh. Ah, si sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Ah, sige. May Thank you po, sir. Rose. Sir, good morning. Yes, Miss. Good morning po. Doc Nuki, yung question ko lang naman po eh when can we know or when when we are going to have our thesis advisor? Ah, okay, advisor. Kailan po usually binibigay po yun? Advisor is assigned after checking. So kung halimbawa So dito ngayon din po semester na to yun, sir. Opo. This, uh, ngayon po na naka-enroll kami, we Opo. will be given advisor Opo. after your checking, sir. Yes. Okay. So, siya po yung mag advise ko sa amin. So, dapat, sir, maas maaga para makahawakan pa niya. Actually, uh, yung advisor na yon ay uh, ina-assign ko, pero parang parang ako na yung co-advisor. Actually, nauna pa ako mag-check. Mm, okay, good, sir. Pagating sa kanya. Oo oh, nga po. <laughs> So essentially, as I mentioned... Okay. It, Pero sir, meron kasi kami dapat advisor, di ba sir? Meron. Meron yan. At di ko kayo papapayan okay. sa... Okay po. Na walang advisor, syempre. Meron yan. Uh, yun lang po sir. Thank you po. Pero siguro yung advisor magiging limited ng role kasi sa phone pa lang marami na kayo. Uh -huh. Sa one-on-one -on -one checking pa lang marami na kayo. Oo nga po eh. Marami na kung may bibigay. Yes. So, yung advisor okay, ay... Okay, sir. So, yun na lang po yung request namin, sir. Yung early posting ng mga approved uh, topics uh, last semesters mm -hmm. para uh, makonsider po namin yung ano... Within the day. Uh, sakali po may kamukha po. You know, within, the day. within the day po. Opo. Yes, Thank you, sir. Kasi we are already, ano na eh, uh, thinking or conceptualizing is baka po may kamukha. <coughs> Ipopost na ngayon, madam. Ngayon din. Pwede na. Okay. Ngayon din. Hey, thank you po. Welcome. Masigit. Thank you po. Ito. Yes po. Miss uh, Dok, ang ask ko lang po, since po meron na po kayong first uh, first group na uh, pupunta po sa inyong mansion, Hindi naman. Uh, ask ko lang po, in the future po, kasi po, realistic naman tayo. In the future mansion nyo po, Uh, ask ko lang po sana sa February kung meron na pong possible lineup or schedule po para po na, na ano ko na po na envision ko na. Definitely magkakaroon yan. Uh, once na matapos ko yung January 12 at ang defense noon ay January 22. 22. Magpo Magpo-post ulit ako ng another day Pinitin ng pala yung calendar ko. Yes po, Dok. Feb February po yung target ko. Oo. Kung February ka, magkakaroon yan panigurado. Baka yung January, magkaroon pa ng another checking aside from January 12. Eh. May chance pa pong meron. Sige po, Dok. Check ko is always open. As for as long as may, may calendar, the dates in my calendar are still open. Kasi syempre, inilalagay ko para hindi nagkakaroon ng ano ng conflict ng ng schedule. So for the meantime, meron ako January 12. So yung may schedule ng January 12 ay ay definitely ang defense nila ay January 22 pag na-check ko na. So makakahinga na sila na after January 22. Ano sa tanong? Ah, uh, additional po. So, uh, yung pong chapters 1 to 2, ipiprepare pa rin po ba kaagad namin yung PowerPoint presentation? Once na ma-approve na yung chapters 1 and 2, uh, pinost ko na sa GC yung content ng PowerPoint. Uh, Magpiprepare kayo ng PowerPoint presentation kasi yun ang gagamitin ninyo during uh, defense. Salamat pa, Doc. You will be given 10 to 15 minutes to present the content of your paper orally uh, using PowerPoint presentation. So dapat lahat na naka-enroll sa EDOC 2.8, unang-una, 
dapat malakas ang boses, hindi naman sumisigaw, ibig sabihin ano lang, loud and clear. Pangalawa, dapat malinaw ang camera ninyo, no? Dapat kita ng mukha ninyo. Pangatlo, yung audio output ninyo ay hindi maingay kasi merong iba uh, nagta-try mag-headset, no? Pero yung headset nila minsan sira pa nagsalita agaralgal. So may hirapan tayo doon, check niyo palagi yung audio ninyo, no? Or um, yung internet connection ay mahina. Pag mahina ang internet connection, hindi po pinapayagan natin na mag-defend ng paper. Kaya yung mga naka-enroll sa EDOC 2A ay maghanap na kayo ng magandang internet connection kasi <coughs> pag kayo ay naging robotics during the ano, during the defense, automatic 'yon. Cancel ang defense ninyo. Sayang yung araw ninyo. Kasi siyempre, Paano, paano kayo maiintindi ng panel member kung ang salita ninyo ay parang garalgal or parang robot o parang nakahang na kayo, nakanganga kayo, nakahang. Hindi gumagala. So, kasi pagsasabay-sabay nyo yun eh, audio, video, <coughs> PowerPoint presentation. So, pag-aralan nyo rin po sa Zoom kung paano mag-share screen at kung paano mag-share ng power, mag-play ng PowerPoint no? sa Zoom. Kasi minsan yung iba hindi marunong. Wala namang problema kung hindi kayo marunong. Pwede magpaturo or pwedeng aralin. Basta sa defense, dapat you know how to manipulate your PowerPoint slides. Ano po? Ah, sige. What else? And of course, sa defense, uh, part na ng orientation natin, dapat nakapang ano pa rin kayo, naka medyo, medyo ano pa rin, medyo presentable pa rin. Hindi ko naman sinabing formal. Presentable pa rin ang pananamit. Yung tipong akala mo ay professional pa rin tingnan. Hindi, hindi porket nasa bahay na, nakasando na lang, no? nakabra, ganun. <laughs> so, dapat ano, uh, presentable pa rin, professional pa rin ang presentation ninyo. Hindi kasi nasabing mag-ano kayo, mag-gown kayo or mag-super formal. Pero yung presentable lang, okay na yun. Kasi... Uh, nakikita pa rin namin ang screen ninyo, kalahati ng almost one-fourth ng katawan ninyo. Kaya dapat presentable yung dito. Hindi naman namin kayo patatayuin, kaya kahit sa baba, huwag nyo nang ayusin. Yung taas na lang. <laughs> yung taas na lang dapat maayos. <laughs> dapat po, lalayo kayo sa mga lugar na maraming manok. Kasi minsan yung manok maingay. Lalayo kayo sa mga lugar na maraming aso. Lalo yung mga aso na may ingay, no? kasi mga disrupt po yun. Lalayo po kayo sa mga lugar na marami nagiinuman, kasi baka mamay naririnig namin yung kwento na nagiinuman. No? Lalayo, lalayo kayo sa mga lugar na may construction na ginagawa. Kasi maririnig namin doon yung eh, mga pangko, mga kung ano-ano mga construction sounds. No? Ibig sabihin, kung gusto nyo sa cementerio, tahimik siguro. Hindi <laughs> joke. <laughs> Pero dapat eating aside, dapat kayo lang ang naririnig na wala ng iba. No? Huwag po muna kayo maghahanap uh, ng katabi ninyo kasi baka di kayo makapag-focus. Kasi minsan na, na realize na ano namin napansin namin na may nagde-defense. Habang nagde-defense, tingin ng tingin sa sa gilid din pala may, may katabi pala siya, no? O kaya naman ganoon ng ganoon ng kamay, yung pala kinakalabit siya ng kinakalabit ng katabi niya. <laughs> So, pwede po ba sa defense niyo solo lang muna kayo? At uh, make sure na na aral niyo yung paper niyo. Bawal po ang tutor. Kasi may na uh, encounter kami last time habang nagde-defense, may katabi tutor. Bawat tanong titingin sa bilid. <coughs> Tinatanong katabi ko ano kung ano sa sagot niya. <laughs> Makikita po namin 'yon kapag 'yon ay ano sa mga gestures. <laughs> yes, sir. Coach, oh, uh, hello po. Hello, yes, Miss Maylie. Uh, opo, may tanong lang po, i-clarify ko lang po ulit. Yung pong sa first group po na pupunta sa inyo sa chapter para po ipakita yung chapter 1 and 2, ano po uli yung date or schedule, sir? January 12, 12 noon. Sir, eh, di ba po, eh, January 16 na po tayo ngayon. I'm sorry, January, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. 20 pala. Apo, January 20 po, sir. Sabi ko po, nakala ko na-miss ko na po yung pagpunta po sa inyo, sir. Thank you po. Hindi nabasa ko. 
Uh, January 20 po. Tapos po yung pag na, nabasa nyo na po yung chapter 1 and 2, kailan po 22 po talaga yung defense? So, nakita ko na okay na. <clears throat> Usually kasi kinokorekto na yung title, yung framework, yung statement of the problem, major and specific, pati yung design. At pag sinabi kong kinokorekt, ang gagawin nyo na lang, ang kailangan nyo lang pala pag pumunta kayo rito, uh, of course, maliligo para malinis, walang virus. Pangalawa, <laughs> Pangalawa, merong face mask and face shield. May alcohol. At syempre, maglinis ng tenga. Mag, bago kayo pumunta dito, mag-cotton buds muna kayo. Kasi, ang gagawin nyo, pag nag-dictate ako, gusto ko malinis ang tenga ninyo para maririnig niyo yung i-dictate ko. Kasi, ibibigay ko na, yung, kung nakita ko na mali yung paper ninyo, ibibigay ko na yung corrected one. Na i-dictate ninyo. Okay lang ba yun? Na okay po. Tama. Okay po, sir. Opo. Kaya so, most probably, pag alis nyo ng January 20 dito, almost ready na kayo sa paper ninyo. Kung na-take down notes nyo yung mga dinictate ko. Kasi ilalagay okay. na lang yung paper ninyo. Okay po. So, yung pong January 22, is, ano po yun? Tentative po yun para sa defense? Or yun na po yun? Kung nakita ko na okay naman ang paper at ready kayo, pwede yung final, ano na yun? Final time na yun. <clears throat> okay po. Thank you po, sir. Thank you po. Ang parang hindi pa ay baka hindi muna. Kasi after, after January 20, magsasubmit kayo ng soft copies ng inyong paper. By the way, uh, tinanggal ko na yung submission ng hard copy para hindi na kayong magpapa-LDC. Siyempre, yung mga panel members, kailangan ng, ano, kailangan, ng, um, kailangan ng hard copy ng inyong paper. Ay, I'm sorry, ng, ng copy ng paper nyo. Pero tinanggal ko na yung hard copy para hindi, na, hindi nyo na kailangan magpa-LBC. So, uh, pagka-check ko ng paper nyo at pagka-incorporate nyo right away, isa-send nyo yung soft copy kay either kay Ms. Jen or kay Chris. Tapos, sila yung magsisend ng mga panel members mm -hmm. ng soft copy ng paper ninyo. Kaya, so, i-prepare nyo na lang, PowerPoint ninyo. Okay po. Thank you po, sir. Doc, thank you po. <laughs> Uh, may tanong pa? Ako po, sir. Meron pong Doc. question. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Leongson, ikaw ba yan? Yes po, sir. Uh, open nga na. Sir, ask. Open nga uh, na. Ang question ko lang po. Ayun. Uh, uh, sir, ang question ko lang po yung pong last uh, trimester po kasi uh, ano po kami student po kami from Edu. Uh, ano po, methods of research. So, ang napasa lang po namin na requirements ay yung summary. So, hindi po namin natapos yung uh, chapters 1 and 2. So, ngayon po, kasi ako yan po namin binubuo yun. Kasi po, ang problem ko po, uh, uh, wala po akong mahanap na re reliable and valid instrument na pwede, na pwede ko pong gamitin sa aking research. So, ang bala ko po sana igumawa ng sarili ko pong uh, instrument. Ano po ba yung mga pagdadaanan na test or yung possible po na pagdaanan po ng instrument ko bago po, bago po siya magamit? Kailangan mapa-content validate. Ang tawag din content validity. And then kailangan din ng reliability testing. Pwede ka magpa-intra-rater or inter-rater reliability testing para magkaroon ka ng Cronbox Al. Para magkaroon ka ng coefficient. Sa inyo po din po yun, sir? Or ano po ako ng Sa content validity, pwedeng ako, pwedeng si Dr. Ray, pwedeng yung mga kilala mo na marunong sa research. Kasi ang pagpapavalidate ay hindi kung sino-sino lang ang mag-validate niyan. Dapat unang-una, marunong sa research. Pangalawa, dapat marunong dun sa content ng topic mo. Ano ba ang topic mo? Ano po yung utilization of individual digital filing system? Digital filing system, tapos? And its impact to the academic. Mm. Ay to teacher's performance. Teacher's performance. On teacher's performance, ITCRF yan. Tama? Document yes po. By the, uh, kung halimbawa po bang i-continue ko po yung research ay applicable naman po kaya kung halimbawa po June po ang end ng school year. Bali, ang result po na ITCRF ay June. Next sem po, uh, bali kung ang thesis writing po ay next sem, maabot po kaya yun, sir? Oo. Oh. Yes, yeah. Abot yun. <clears throat> sakto. Sakto ng end ng, ng DepEd school year ninyo. 
O going back doon sa sinasabi ko, ay PCRF documentary analysis lang yan. Ibig sabihin ng documentary analysis, the data are already available. All you need to do is just to um, ask the office to give you a copy. In your case, Pwede sa district, papaalam pa lang na kailangan mo ng result ng IPCRF ng mga teachers. Yung IV mo, ano sabi mo? Digital Utilization of? Digital Filing System po. Digital Filing System. O, yun ang gagawin System. mo. Yun ang gagawin mo ng questionnaire. Pero para makagawa ka ng sarili mong questionnaire, dapat nagbasa ka muna ng literature about digital filing system. Kasi magiging content ng instrument mo is about digital filing system. Para to din discuss yun. Kasi when you look for a validator, since it is a digital filing system, huwag ka magpapavalidate sa mga hindi marunong sa technology. Kasi hindi ka may intindihan dun sa digital filing. Kasi pag sinabing digital filing, it It is the use of technology, tama ba? In filing yes, your documents, tama ba? So parang yes, computer or IT related yan. So hanap pa ng mga researcher na, na marunong din sa technology at the same time. Okay po. At ang tawag dun is content validity. For Thank you po. Okay na? Thank you po sir. All right. Talk. No problem. Any more question? Kaya, kaya ko kayo pinagbabasa, kaya ko kayo pinapakinig sa mga videos para yung time na mas mahaba yung clarifications. Mas more of clarifications. Para na rin, actually, para na rin consultations kung gagawin natin. You do, you do your part, listen and watch the video, and then kada meeting natin, meron tayong parang one hour for consultation. Purposes, every after uh, uh, webinar. Kasi magkakaroon tayo ng series of webinars. G ganon ka innovative yung ating, grad ang ating subjects. Hindi typical na no, reporting. Gusto nyo ba na reporting? Ako kasi ayoko na reporting. Ayaw na sir. <laughs> Ay, doc, ayaw namin no. Ako rin ayaw na reporting. Kaya ang gagawin... Makikinig na lang po kami saka kami mag-aan. No? That's right. Kaya ang ginagawa... Maganda po sir yung ano, yung sa YouTube. Parang may teacher din kami eh. Correct. Tapos, may time pa kaming balik-balikan po yung lesson. Anytime, ano. That's right. At, Opo. At madaligdagan pa natin kasi may mga topics pa ako dito. Halimbawa, patents in scientific research. Baka di kayo familiar sa patent. No? Mm -hmm. so, na idea. Legal issues in education. Ethical standards. Civil service regulations sa mga taga-public. Ito pa. Importance of research. Tapos, parang accreditation perspective. Importance of research, CHED perspective. Meron ba rito nasa higher ed, nasa college, o lahat nasa deaf ed? Nasa private po sa college. Sino? May I know kung sino? Doc, ano lang, part-time lang. Ah, okay. Eh, oh, sige. Pero nasa deaf ed din po. Okay. So, ang, ang, kaya dito, uh, baba, uh, meron din tayong topic na importance of research, parang higher ed perspective. And of course, karamihan taga-public, Importance of research, depth-ed perspective. Kasi siyempre kayo, pinapagawa rin kayo ng mga action research, di ba? Yes, po. So, Invite din ako ng speaker to talk about the importance of research in depth-ed. Para mas talo kayo motivate. And then siyempre, very timely, the importance of ICT in education and research. Yes. ICT in education and research. Doon sa, mga, doon sa mga recorded videos, meron na doon topic about how to develop an online instrument, online or Google Docs or Google Forms. Panoorin nyo na lang mga katulong yun kung kayo ay in the future magda-data gathering. Tsaka part ng discussion niyo ng methodology is the use of Google Forms or online, <coughs> online forms or online data gathering. Kasi uh, I'm not, not being pessimistic. I do not want to become pessimistic. Pero with the current... Um, situation in the Philippines that we have another case of COVID-2, the first case of COVID-2 in Quezon City. Kumbaga, hindi pa nga tayo nababaccinate ng COVID-1. Ibago na naman okay. yung klase ng... Ano, nag Ibago na naman pag dumating. O nag-mutate na naman yung, yung virus. So, not being pessimistic, pero 
feeling ko baka magtagal pa itong online learning na to. Online and mga distance learning na to. So, kailangan natin maging accustomed. Kaya meron ako mga topics about ICT. Meron akong topics about developing online survey instrument. No? So, yun. Uh, we are praying na of course matapos na. Pero sa nangyayari, mukhang <laughs> sa vaccine pa lang nagtatalo-talo ng gobyerno kung anong pipiliin eh. Kung, kung yung galing China, kung galing UK, galing US, no? Doon pala nagtatalo-talo na sila eh. Tsaka yung prioritization pa. Ang, syempre, priority dyan, healthcare workers. Diniko teachers. Isa sa mga priorities din. So, mauuna kayo. Mauuna tayo pala kasama ko doon. Uh, pero syempre, kung nasa government ka, syempre priority ang mga nasa government, yung mga public school teachers. Papabaksin ko yan. And then, ah, kaya lang, ang problem natin, may, 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 yung sa COVID-1 yun. E paano yung sa COVID-2? May bago na naman. Bagong strain. Alam niyo na ba kung anong pangalan? Pinapangalanan nila yun, tsaka hindi na numberan eh. Na, na ano yun, nabanggit, nabanggit na sa balita, nakalimutan ko lang. Sige, next meeting. That's my assignment. Ah, na, ah. pangalan ng COVID-2 na yan. <laughs> Kaya, uh, importante, yung mga naka-enroll sa EDOC 208, yung ating nag-iisang face-to-face ay mag-iingat po kayo. At ako rin mag-iingat din ako dahil galing kayo sa labas, syempre. Kaya sabi ko kanina, ay dapat po pumunta kayo dito talaga na <clears throat> face mask kayo, naka-face, full face field, no? Uh, alcohol. Yung magsuot kayo ng PPE, yung ginagamit ng gamit <laughs> nurses sa hospital. <laughs> Ko init sir nun. <laughs> Pagpapawisan sila. Pagpapawisan kayo, o nga. E di wag na, basta ano na lang, maligo na lang at mag-alcohol para maligo. Para walang dalang virus, no? At ang mag- mag-observe tayo ng proper health protocol dito, hindi ko papapasukin ang mga temperature na 37 and above. Dapat yes, 30. sir. Meron akong pamar. Dapat mga 36 lang. Oo, ipapabaril ko kayo. Pag yun ay nag-37 <laughs> and above kayo, hindi kayo papapasukin. Tapos okay. siyempre, may alcohol, paliliguan ko kayo ng alcohol. Pagpasok nyo ng bahay ko, basang-basa kayo ang al- ng alcohol buong katawan. <laughs> <laughs> Ang oh, mili kayo, alcohol na Sound Rocks para medyo malakas na. <laughs> Sagot sa Sound Rocks, sir. <laughs> ah, sige. Meron pa kayong clarification? Sir, every Saturday po ba ang klase natin? Uh, um, itatry ko na mag-every Saturday. Pero kung wala tayo ng Saturday, meron naman tayo mga videos, mga asynchronous. No? Opo, na mapapanood po. Na mapapanood. Po. Every every before, basta every week meron kayong assignment. Meron kayong gagawin para meron kayong mapapakinggan. No? Okay po. No, Mayroon kami po mga bago sa Saturday. Dalawa na po ipapasan namin. Tama. Tama ka dyan. So kung ngayon ay 16, 23, tingnan natin kung ano, kung uh, magkakaroon tayo. Basta mag-announce naman ako. Uh, I will not fail to give you Reminders and announcement on what's going to happen the following Saturday. Kasi ang maganda dito may GC. Madali mag-post eh. Opo. Oh, Saka makikita po namin. That's right. All right. So meron pa ba? Meron pa kayong clarification? Lalo na sa research na napakinggan ninyo? Doon sa napakinggan ninyo? Meron, meron ba kayong... Sir, last na po. Last na, sir. Last na. Ay, hindi. Kahit hindi last, walang problema. <laughs> so, sir, hindi na po pala, sir. I'm sir, ito nang po ako. Hmm. Sir, ano po, di ba po may papacheck? Um, ano po ba, may, may maximum po ba, sir, ng mga magpapacheck po para makapunta sa inyo, sir? For Wala example, na. kung mga dalawa lang, tatlo, ano po? Wala naman. The more, the merrier. Para mas mabilis matapos. Ang okay, buto nga, ang buto nga, po. February, March pa lang, lahat kayo nakapag-proposal defense na eh. Para April, free na kayo. Thank you po. Mas maagang makapagpa-check, mas maagang may schedule ng defense. Walang maximum, walang minimum. Kahit 100 kayong pumunta rito, kaya ko kayong i-accommodate. Next. Next. Thank you, sir. Basta, magpapalista lang kayo. May ano tayo, may listahan ng 2.0 tayo. <laughs> Kung member kayo ng GC, pag wala kayo, pag di kayo nagpalista doon, syempre, I do not expect it to come. Pero pag nagpalista kayo doon, I will ex- I am expecting you that you will 
um, come and uh, have your paper check. No, kaya hmm. uh, so far sa listahan, meron ako nakitang ano eh mag magte-ten na yata, magte-ten na magpapa-check. So definitely ay may schedule na sila for proposal defense. Ganun naman eh. Basta pagka-check, schedule na ng defense 'yon. Sir? Yes po. Um, sige po. May question lang po ako regarding po sa pagpunta po pala. From Mandalu yung po kasi ako hanggang po sa bahay niyo po, sa place niyo po, may grab po ba? Po out po doon sa search po ah. Kasi yun po yung iniisip ko lang po kasi yung pagko-commute po. May grab po ba diretso po sa inyo, sir? Meron, meron naman. <clears throat> okay po. Mandalu yung love ka ba o labas? Parehas po, sir. <laughs> Parehas po, depende. Opo. Ano? Uh, so, sir, meron pong grab naman. Po, ano po? Opo, meron naman po. Thank you po. Meron naman. Uh, ang naging prof mo ba ay si, si Sir Joel? Hindi. Hindi naman. Yes, sir. Sir Joel po. Ask, ask him. Uh, nakapunta na siya dito many times. Okay po, sir. Thank you po. At sa, actually, sa 24 nga, nandito siya eh. Mag-aanak nga raw po ata siya. Invited ko kayong lahat. Sesan po ba inyo? Oo nga. Sa address na binigay ko kung kaya niyo pumunta. Thank you po, sir. Thank you, sir. Alright, no problem. Meron pa? Meron pang tanong? Wala na po, sir. Thank you po. Alright. So, kung nasagot ko na lahat ng tanong, at uh, I will be waiting for your email to check yung mga nakatay na last Saturday para dun sa out ng EDOC 208 and EDOC 202. No? Alright. Kung wala ng tanong, it's lunchtime. No? 